Uh, we now move on to uh, some really cool stuff from the MathWorks. And uh, to kick things off with the MathWorks uh, materials is Mike McLernan. Uh, so let's all welcome Mike. Yep, that's HDMI. And let's put the mic on Mike. Uh, I don't have HDMI. Oh, you don't? Oh, VGA, yes. Yeah. At WPI? Absolutely. <laughs> All good? Okay. All right. Thank you. So I'm Mike McLernan. I am a development manager uh, for communications products at the MathWorks. Been there since 2001. Been coming here almost since the very beginning. Alex has been a marvelous host, a, a wonderful collaborator, and a dear friend over those years. And I've worked with uh, many of you in the audience. But with that, let's talk a little bit about the MathWorks. So um, first of all, uh, apologies for the picture. MathWorks, that picture of MathWorks doesn't look very inviting. It was probably taken in March sometime. Um, but uh, that's our main campus. Um, what's a little bit about the company? So we're 35 years old. Mat okay, who here has ever heard of MATLAB? Okay, who here has ever heard of Simulink? Nearly as many. Okay, quick question. Who here uses MATLAB on a regular basis? Okay, who here uses Simulink on a regular basis? Ah, the averages hold true every time. It's mostly MATLAB. <laughs> ah, that's fine. We love them both. And whatever tool serves your needs, use it. We love it. Okay, what's our tagline? We accelerate the pace of discovery, innovation, development, and learning in engineering and science. Um, it is remarkable to hear the kinds of things that people do with our software over the world. Uh, the, the LIGOS uh, project that uh, proved Einstein's uh, work on relativity 100 years ago. It's kind of amazing. So 30 offices worldwide, over a million MATLAB users worldwide, and used in over 5,000 universities. And so in terms of the scope and footprint of MATLAB, i um, tell you a little story. So a couple years ago, I was in the Dominican Republic, working in, in the villages and the orphanages and stuff like that. Ran into someone at an ice cream shop. I asked, well, where are you from? Romania. What are you doing here? Oh, I'm a researcher on bats, like the little rodents with wings. So I said, oh, she's technical. I wonder, have you ever heard of MATLAB? Well, yes, I use it all the time. So here I am, a joker from Massachusetts, talking to someone from Romania in the Dominican Republic about MATLAB. I thought, this is surreal. So it's enormously gratifying to realize that our software has literally gone worldwide and has made an impact on our society. So very proud to be uh, with them. OK, MathWorks products and application areas. Can you read all that? Not so much? Um, bit of an eye chart. The point is, we do a lot. We have 90 software products covering a vast array of technical areas. What, what are the areas? So even this, this is a bit of an eye chart. Um, but what we're focusing on today is signal processing, wireless communications. That's on the MATLAB side. What we do in MATLAB, we often do similarly in Simulink. So here's a list of uh, overall areas that we work in in Simulink. So again, our main interest is signal processing and wireless communications. Um, if you look at the uh, uh, bullet below that, code generation, C and HDL, I know that that is of interest to this group as well. Um, I don't talk about that part as much. But if you are interested in that, still come see me. I can put you in touch with other people at the MathWorks who can uh, talk all day long about HDL. All right, what are our goals in wireless communications? First, model signal flow from antenna to bits. So Manuel, you did a phenomenal job this morning, uh, a moment ago, talking about the hardware. But oftentimes, if you are performing an SDR solution, the first thing you're going to do is Put the hardware aside. Let me model this completely and totally and exclusively in software. Keep the ship close to shore. And we offer a wide variety of tools to do just that. So also channel models, that's kind of important too. Um, and a lot of people, they need them. They don't want to build them. So that is an area where we have invested a lot of time and effort. Um, we want to model phi and MAC interactions. 
the days of simply streaming data from point A to point B is over. Modern communications involves networks. And so more and more, we are modeling both phi and Mac interactions in both a generic way. Where's, by the way, where's Ethem? Raise your hand, Ethem. So Ethem Sosa, a member of my team, did a wonderful job creating a little homegrown standard with a phi and a Mac together with and without radio. So, and Manuel, we, uh, we use B210s for that example, so uh, we love it. It works great. It shows the principle. Um, so we're doing more and more of that. By the way, we're also starting to do more and more in the standards-based world. So uh, witness the next bullet, standards-based comm systems. Um, up until about five years ago, uh, MathWorks wireless comms offerings were mostly generic. If you wanted to build up a system from scratch, go ahead and use our tools. We realized, well, the world, the comms world, the wireless comms world is all about standards. So we decided we need to get serious about standards of all shapes, sizes, and colors. And so starting from uh, 213, we started offering an LTE simulation product. Shortly thereafter, we began offering a Wi-Fi simulation product. And our point, in, and, and we're also investing in 5G. The point is, MathWorks is serious about keeping track with standards and modeling the phi, and increasingly above the phi, for you. Another little thing we do is desktop simulation and over-the-air rapid prototyping with SDR hardware. So we typically offer this capability to support in two modes. One we call I.O. or peripheral mode, where your host computer simply serves as a uh, source or a sink for data to or from the radio. The other part, the rapid prototyping part, that's where the HDL code generation comes in. And uh, ah, let's see, where is Kenny? OK, raise your hand high, Kenny. All right, Kenny Barley, he is, uh, um, he's done some internships with MathWorks. He's currently a student at University of Strathclyde. He has done a bunch of work in HDL for wireless comm system. It, and he has a poster outside, so I'm giving you some free advertisement there, Kenny. So please run to him if you are interested in HDL code generation. All right, so a little bit of a, uh, not a taxonomy, an ecosystem view of what you might want to do in a wireless comm system. So this is a very generic uh, type of a TXRX. So you have a transmitter, fading channel, receiver. What are some specific things that you would want to do in such a system? Well, model standards-based waveforms. As I mentioned earlier, we offer LTE, LTE Advanced, 5G, and WLAN waveforms. And actually, by the way, we do dabble in other standards as well, NFC, Zigbee, and we're investing in other areas. By the way, Manuel, thank you very much for going down to 10 megahertz, because as you may know, NFC is at 13, and uh, we need to be able to work with that. So thanks for doing that. You also care about MIMO and OFDM. Uh, modern comm systems, almost exclusively, they use MIMO and OFDM. So it just has to be a staple. We do model those things. Beam forming. Um, who's ever heard of massive and hybrid beam forming? Yeah, probably half the room. Um, it's particularly in 5G, it is going to be an essential critical technology. If you are operating at 60 gigahertz, your beam widths are like this. And you, but the losses are incredible. So you have to be informed in order to get that attenuation loss because of the frequency back. So we offer beamforming capabilities as well. Uh, antenna modeling. So increasingly, uh, antennas matter a lot. And, so if, and if you are going to perform an integrated system modeling and simulation, you've got to include the antenna as well. Um, RF and channel impairments. We want to be as real world as possible. You can't simply put, perform an end-to-end, -end, back to back simulation. You have to anticipate what are going to be my impairments. Let me model them in the software. Um, and if you're going to model the impairments, you have to also be able to model the compensators, the corrections for those impairments. So uh, synchronization of all sorts, RF corrections. And finally, you have to visualize and perform qualitative and quantitative analysis of these signals. So that's where you really decide and determine, is my system, is my design meeting the spec that I uh, uh, declared early on in the design process? So to do all of these things together, we do offer a number of products towards that, this end. 
LTE, WLAN, and 5G, communication system toolbox, phased array system toolbox, antenna toolbox, uh, RF products, again, comms, and also DSP. The point is we have a broad array of products that will enable you to do an integrated, combined system simulation. And I should also mention that uh, you can also perform all this on the radio. We have many, many uh, radio demos uh, that include USRPs and other software-defined radio platforms. Okay, so Robin, I put this slide in here for you. Thanks. <laughs> all right, so, okay, quick. You know that picture, right? What is that? That is an FM comms, uh, sounds an FM comms booth. There you go. All right, so um, th this, this RF chip uh, has, let's see, how many registers? I don't know, hundreds? Just It's uh, about uh, 12,000 registers. OK. Um, if you want to tweak some of those registers in the hardware, boy, you are diving into the deep end. How much more convenient would it be if there was a software model that exactly uh, mimicked that hardware? So happens we do have such software, an exact and validated model of the 83 AD 9361. So here's a little uh, screenshot of that. It includes uh, state flow. Do I, I don't have a pointer. So that, uh, that little state chart in the upper left, so that model is a state machine that goes on inside the chip and then you have a variety of other RF processing operations, AGC, tunable RF, programmable digital filters. The point is, it is always, always, always easier to do simulation, assessment, evaluation in software than it is in hardware. That's why SDR has become popular in the first place. Why deploy the hardware only to find out it doesn't work? Why not do work in software and then test it and tweak it? So if you want to know more, if you care about the AD9361 or even the 64, Google that to learn more. OK. So another area in which we work is to test algorithms with SDR and live signals. So if you want to know more about that, Google MATLAB and SDR. You will find a discovery page that will give you kind of a, a front door introduction to the platforms that we support, the capabilities that we support. So the relevant products are listed here. And what are the platforms that we do support? <clears throat> USRP, we have been working with Edis now for eight, nine years, has it been? Something like that. Um, been great partners. Uh, they put out good hardware. Uh, RTL-SDR, we had a little uh, uh, download workshop session last night uh, where people downloaded our support package uh, right then and there. And then they started, let's see, they were decoding FM, they were tracking aircraft, they were getting RBDS systems on their FM broadcast um, in an hour. It's pretty fantastic. This is a $20 dongle, RX only, so uh, it's not all that powerful. But my goodness, for $20, you can do SDR. Um, that 20 years ago, this didn't exist. People talked about it, but it was not for the masses. Today, SDR is for the masses. We also support a Zinc platform. This is if you really do want to get serious. You want to deploy your algorithms, your filters, your uh, timing loops on the radio, on the hardware. And so the Zinc is generally the platform that MathWorks points people to in order to use HDL Coder and get their radio running uh, and get their design running on the radio. Again, Kenny, raise your hand again. Uh, he can quote you chapter and verse of what you need to do in order to get that going. So it was easy, right, Kenny? An afternoon or so? Yep. Good, yes. Yeah, so there you are. So, um, so actually, true confessions. So Manuel did mention earlier that it's, people want thing, design tools to be simple. And we know that SDR and particularly HDL is it's hard, period. But on our development teams, we have embraced the idea of simplicity at all costs. So you would not believe the arguments and discussions that we get in in our design review saying, do we need that argument for that function? Do we need that property for that object? Because one of the points that we want to make in our software is it's doggone easy to use. And so we will fuss about a single property or argument because uh, we know that for every added widget that we have, that's more time that you have to use in order to figure out how 
to use the, the software. So simplicity and ease of use is a real ca uh, calling card that we strive for all the time. Finally, uh, the Pluto. Uh, thank you, Robin. So I do believe that this, is, uh, this fills a nice niche as well. So this is about $100 TXRX, 70 megahertz to 6 gigahertz. Uh, it has been out for a little bit over a year. Demand is high. Um, so we, we find it highly useful in the educational uh, realm. I've got a demo out in the demonstration area that uses the Pluto. Stop by uh, this afternoon, this morning, and we can talk more about it. OK, so now I'd like to, uh, five minutes. You're killing me. Oh my goodness gracious. All right, a quick look back. Uh, to what we're doing in uh, 2018A. That, that was our release that came out in March. So in the comm system toolbox, there's a little bit of a focus on satellite communications. So who's ever heard of APSK? Quick show of hands. OK, it's better than QAM in nonlinear channels. And so we decided, hey, let's, let's add it. So we have done that. Uh, we've also done some massive and hybrid beamforming examples because, as I mentioned, modern communications uses beamforming all the time. Uh, also, these combined Phi and Mac examples. Finally, uh, NFC and Zigbee support. Again, we are committed to keeping up with standards, particularly the most important ones. Okay, LTE system toolbox. Uh, a couple things that I'd want to highlight for you. First the item, the NBIOT. It's enormous. Uh, Alex, how many devices are going to be uh, connected with IoT in 20 years? Billions? Trillions? At least a few. Yeah. As, as Carl Sagan would say, billions and billions. Uh, and that is no exaggeration. So we need to model uh, that NBIOT. And also V to X. Who believes in, in their lifetimes they will see uh, widespread adoption of driverless cars? OK, more than half the room. I believe that too. Um, so it's pretty darn important to model that in software. So that's what LTE is doing. Also, we're investing heavily in 5G. We have a, what we call a support package, an add-on that if you own, LTE system toolbox, you can download this for free. So this is an, uh, this is an example where we are now tracking the standard and um, trying to keep up with what 3GPP is doing. Um, let's see. OK, WLAN, another example where we are tracking the standards pretty closely. So these are the flavors that we already support. Um, AX is the, uh, the next big push. So that is uh, sub 6 gigahertz. It's a, a 2.4. Um, but it, it embraces MIMO uh, for the first time. So this is the, uh, the sun, if you will, of uh, AC. Um, and there's heavy investment there. Uh, and here's some examples of what uh, we've done in the AX world. And this is available today. Uh, what are some current investment areas? So by, by, by that, what do I mean? I mean, here's stuff that we are working on today that will appear in the future. So I'm going to purposely be somewhat vague. I'm calling them investment areas. But it gives you a, a little window into what we're thinking about and what we see in the future. So for comms, standard compliant waveform generation. Well, I've already told you we care about standards. We're doing that more and more. But we want to make it super easy for you to do. Why have to write code? Let's see if we can enable you to, uh, um, to specify, I want a WLAN waveform and not write a line of code. And well, maybe you might want to say, all right, now that I've configured something, um, spit out the MATLAB code for me. That's something we're working on now. Millimeter wave channel models. Ch ah, Alex, you've got to give me more time. Uh, channel models and, and the whole art of doing it. Oh my goodness, two minutes. Um, it has gotten more complex. It used to be just stochastic models and spatially defined and then ray tracing. So we're investing in millimeter wave, which uh, starts to embrace ray tracing. Multi-user simulation, I've talked about that some. Ah, Bluetooth, an old standard, but it is ubiquitous. It is still a very relevant standard. And we're also talking about speed. Uh, and gee whiz, if your desktop has multiple cores on it, by golly, let's use them. All right, some more. LTE, again, track the standards. And also, this is very important, open MATLAB code. Um, who, likes to, uh, who likes to take a look at the uh, code that you've received from a... Um, from a MATLAB uh, installation and see what's going on in that algorithm. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Um, and so we are committed, all future development that we have, we're going to write it in MATLAB so that you can debug, inspect, and extend, 
if you want. The days of us uh, building black box software are over. So uh, WLAN, uh, again, track, track the standard, involve more of the protocol stacks. And as more flavors of, uh, of WLAN come out, we're going to support it. OK, in summary, antenna to bits on the desktop and on the radio. So with that, I am all done. Thank you very much for your time and attention. <laughs>